We're continuing on on this uh, series called, uh, you know, uh, Getting Back to Normal. And uh, one of the reasons why we're kind of tackling this, this issue is because, if we're all honest, we all desire to some degree or another to go back to normal, whatever that may be. For me, one of the things is, man, I, you're, I would just, I can't wait to get rid of these masks to be able to see everybody's face. I can't wait to be able to have normal interactions with people and not have these awkward interactions with other people, even including my own, my own friends. And I'm sure a lot of us kind of feel the same way in that. But here's the thing about this series. We are really diving into this series to really kind of press in and to work on the stress and the anxieties, the worries, the fears, the isolation, depression, being scared or frustrated or the disunity that's really happening, not only in our own individual lives, but also in our lives, in our community, in our culture as well, through all of these crazy changes that have been happening through this, this last year. And I know that we all just would think, man, if we could just get back to normal, everything would be great. But here's the thing. Do you think that God desires for us to live our lives in this anxious time and with stress and worry and frustration and disunity? Of course he doesn't. So if that is true, why doesn't he just bring us back to where we were before this whole year began? Well, maybe God is teaching us that maybe we need a different normal. Maybe we need a new normal. In fact, if you were with us last week, Caleb shared an article that was written way back in, in 2019, just last year before 2020, that talked about how we as, as people in, in our country are really at a low spot where we are feeling a lot of sense of isolation and depression and a sense of anxiety. So, so even just going back to normal before 2020 really doesn't cut it for us. So then the question is, is what does it mean to be normal? And if we we're going to have a new normal, what would that normal be? All right, well, first of all, let's just kind of recap from last week so we can kind of move forward this week. Is First of all, last week, uh, Caleb defined for us what normal is. And so this is kind of what normal is. Normal is, just as a noun, is the usual average or it's typical. If you have a typical work week, that's normal. If you order your usual thing, it's what you normally order. Or even as an adjective, it's conforming to a standard. All of us, just different families, we have different standards even just within our own family. It's what we call the norms, the, what's normal for our family. You have different standards for how you clean your house or what cleaning or what clean means in your house, as I do. Uh, you have different standards of what it means to behave as a family, just as I do. And so these are kind of the norms, the standards within our own family. So that's kind of the definition of normal. But there's a problem, though, with our normal, with the things that we consider typical or average or usual or even our own standard that I believe is what's causing a lot of the stress, the anxiety, the worry, even some of the frustration and disunity that we, we feel, not only in our, in our lives, but also in our relationships and even, even as a country as a whole. So last week, Caleb gave us some of those problems with our normal, the, the things that we look for to be typical or normal. And one of the things was, was that our normal, one of the problems is our normal is limited to our experience. In other words, uh, I don't know about you, but for me, I'm always trying to figure out the perfect schedule. If I can figure out the perfect schedule to my life in order for it to become normal or typical in a way by which I, I feel like I'm flourishing, everything feels stable and comfortable, it seems like it's always shifting, especially as my perspective changes or I'm dealing with different things and looking at things differently. It seems like I'm always changing. So my normal tends to be very limited by my own limited experience. And my experience is pretty limited. I'm a finite person, uh, just like you are. And not only that, but you and I, in our limited experiences, we tend to also have different definitions of what normal looks like. You have a normal and I have a normal. My normal looks different than your normal. Um, and sometimes when our normals kind of collide, it can create some, some relational issues. For instance, let's just say uh, I have a schedule. I have a routine. That's in my life, that's normal. It's comfortable. It's easy for me. You have a routine. You have a schedule. That's normal for you. That gives you comfort and stability. Well, what happens when you and I need to meet and, and it conflicts with our different schedules? Or we even just pile in some other people into that as well. So now we have multiple people that we're trying to figure out a time where we can get together. 
And so I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is my schedule. This is what's normal for me. This is what's comfortable and easy for me. How about all of you guys conform to my schedule? And you're saying, well, wait a minute. No, 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 no. This is what's my routine and this is what's normal for me. How about you conform to, to my schedule? And so we're always trying to figure that out. And sometimes it can create a lot of frustration. It also happens just even with, within societies like immigration. You have a people group here and then you have other people who begin to immigrate into this society. Maybe at first it's not a big deal because there's only a few of them. But then all of a sudden now there's a lot of people who are coming from a different culture. They have cultural norms that are different from this cultural norms. And so when they come in and they begin to bring their what is normal to them into you know, our lives, we can kind of sit back and say, well, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know if I want these people here because their normal is, is really rubbing against my normal. And so it creates conflict. Another uh, problem with our normal is that it, we tend to rely on inconsistent circumstances in order to give us normal. In other words, uh, just look at 2020. Uh, this pandemic has changed all of our circumstances and it has created it's just so much havoc in our lives and stress and disorder and even chaos in our lives because we have put our normal on things that change, just like things of this world our schedules, our finances, our health, all of these things that we, we tend to think of as normal. We want this, we want typical, a typical paycheck or a normal paycheck. If, if anything, maybe even more, might, that might be okay. Uh, a typical schedule. Uh, and so all of these things, we want them to kind of work out in a very normal way for us in order for us to feel a sense of, of stability. But then something comes along and it shakes it. And that's what creates a lot of the, the tension in our lives. If anything, one thing that the year 2020 teaches us is that we are very fragile people. That it doesn't take much for there to be a little nudge in our society and in our lives in order to really get us into a place of being just be absolutely haywire and, and stressed out. And so we tend, so it tends to be a problem for us when our circumstances um, are inconsistent and we place our lives in, in the stability of our lives on those inconsistent circumstances. And then lastly, one of the problems with our normal is that our normal is just broken. Um, for me, I can be a very selfish person. And so I want everything to be normal for me. And as long as it's normal for me, I'm okay. If, if other things change my normal and other people shift and change my normal, then I'm not in a good place. And in fact, that's where a lot of times, again, like I said before, is that we, we tend to be at odds with each other is when our normals begin to rub against each other. And so that creates a lot of um, toxicity in our relationships and the way that we, we um, relate to other people. But not only that, but also internally as well. So those are the problems with, when, um, with our normal and the way that we define what's normal, typical, usual, or our standard. Uh, when outside things or outside people want to change those things up, it really, really creates a lot of trouble for us. And it just shows us that our normal is just broken. So then the question then is, how do we get to a normal that really does, you know, give us a place by which we are in a solid place that's not limited in our experiences, that is, is stable and strong even when circumstances change, and a normal that's not broken, that's, that is firm, that is strong, and will never break. How do we get to that normal? Well, first of all, I think we got to understand what is normal out there, you know, in our society, in our world. And when you really kind of think about it, there's really only one thing, really, that's normal. In all of the history of, of humankind, in all of the cosmos and the universe, there's really only one normal. And that normal actually is not a thing. That normal is a someone. And that normal is God. In fact, truly, when it comes to the real definition of normal, God is the only real normal. He's the only one who is truly typical, who's truly usual. His standards never change. He's the only one that never, ever changes. All the normals in our life may have a sense of being typical for a while, but then something changes. 
our standards, even by the way that we live, tend to ebb and change and move forward and move backwards and move in circles. There's everything that we tend to put on in our lives as normal tends to shift except for God himself. God is really the only normal. How is it that he is truly the only normal? Well, first of all, what makes God so normal is that God is eternal. In fact, that is probably about the best definition that you can get for normal. You don't get more normal than being eternal. That God has been typical forever. He has been the same a gazillion years before we even put our feet on this planet. He will be the same a gazillion years after our feet are no longer on this planet. That is Typical. That is pretty usual if you've been around forever. In fact, Isaiah 40, 28 says this, and this might be helpful here. Have you, have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting. He's the only one who is everlasting. Everything else shifts. Everything else changes except for God. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows. All right. You and I, we grow. We grow physically, we grow mentally, we grow in lots of different ways. But God himself never grows because he's always been the same forever. And so he never grows weak or weary. He never gets tired. He never gets weak like you and I do because he is constant. He is the same. He is a rock. And so no one can measure the depths of his understanding. No one can even understand or fathom all the intellect and knowledge that God has. So it's really important though, if you look at these two first questions here, have you never heard? Have you never understood? Now I'm pretty sure that the people who read these first words or heard these first words, I'm sure they would probably say, yeah, we, we know, we've heard, we've, we've, we, you know, we know that God is everlasting. We know that God is eternal. I don't think that's really kind of what's conveying here is this sense of new information. I think really what is being you know, brought before us is, have you really contemplated the reality? Have you really comp comp uh, uh, contemplated what it really means for you and how it matters to your life right now to know that God is everlasting, that he never changes? I think what he's really basically saying is that humanity has a choice. You and I, we have a choice. We have a choice to either plant our feet firmly on, on something that never, ever changes, or we have a choice to plant our feet on things that do change. Have you ever really contemplated what you have really um, sunk your, your roots down into, that you planted your feet firmly? Have you ever asked the question, does it last forever? Will it shift? Will it change with circumstances? Or... Will it never change? Will it always be the same? Have you ever really understood the implications that God truly is eternal? That he doesn't change. He's always been God. He always will be God. He doesn't change with us. He doesn't look at us and see all the things that we change and go, oh, maybe I should change. He doesn't do that because he's eternal and he knows everything. He's all powerful. And so he's always consistently the same. And he's the only one ever to be able to be uh, um, in that place of never, ever changing. Everything else changes. Now, there's a time in our lives that we kind of feel like maybe we're invincible, that maybe we can control everything. And once we control our own schedules, we can control our own finances, we can control our own health, we can control other people and do what we want, then, you know what? Then we will be at a place of stability. We will be in a strong place. And sometimes we kind of even feel like that we're in that place. Well, there was a guy many uh, years ago, 27, 26 years ago or so, who was the most powerful person in the world at that time. His kingdom was flourishing. It was incredibly powerful. There was another, not another nation or army as powerful as his. And when you're a king way, 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 way back in the day, you really did whatever you want to do. You were the standard. Whatever you wanted, you got. Whatever you said was true, was true. Whatever anybody ever did, they did. You owned your schedule. You did whatever, and everybody kind of conformed around that. You were the normal. Well, this is what a lot of kings tend to think or thought throughout human history. But oftentimes, life has its way of showing even the most powerful people in the world that maybe they're not really the standard 
for normal like this guy. The guy that I'm talking to about is a man named Nebuchadnezzar. He was the king and he was the king by which uh, Babylon, which was his, his nation, flourished really well and really strong to become the most powerful nation in the world. But God in his, his unchanging ways and his infinite knowledge and power just kind of nudged Nebuchadnezzar in just a slight, his own slight little way by which Nebuchadnezzar began to realize that maybe he's not so power, powerful. In fact, Nebuchadnezzar began to lose his mind. He was not even be able to control his own mind. And then through that period of time, when he lost control, he began to realize that maybe he isn't the normal, that he shouldn't be the norm, that there is a more powerful normal out there, and that, that more powerful normal is God himself who is everlasting, never changes. And this is what it says in Daniel 4, 34. Um, it says, after this time had passed, I, Nebuchadnezzar, of being insane, if you will, looked up to heaven. My sanity returned and I praised and worshiped the most high and honored the one who lives forever. Nebuchadnezzar kind of realized that maybe I'm not gonna live forever, but there's a God who lives forever. His rule is everlasting. Nebuchadnezzar really had to learn the lesson that his rule is not going to last. Not only that, but his kingdom uh, Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom is not going to even last, but there is one whose kingdom is always going to last, and he's the eternal God. His kingdom is eternal. So even in the position of being the most powerful person in the world, he realized that even at, at his perch, he is not the most powerful normal. He is not eternal. Uh, he is fragile. And um, there is a more powerful normal, and that is God, who is eternal, who is always was, who, who is and always will be. And not only that, but what else makes God eternal is his truth. Okay? It's not just the fact that God is eternal forever and he just kind of exists and kind of goes on and on and on and on and on forever. What is also true about God that is also stabilizing, what is also normal, is his truth. His truth never changes. His truth was the same uh, ages before, his truth is going to be the same ages after us. When we come up with new ideas, those ideas aren't really new to God. And sometimes our new ideas aren't necessarily true. You just look at, you know, human history, all the philosophers, the political scientists, and, and they come up with all of these grand ideas, and they're always shifting and changing from one generation to another. So even human beings' truths change. In fact, our truths change so much that a lot of times, even in our own age, a lot of philosophers will say, well, ah, truth is objective. We can't even really know truth. Well, that might be true in and of ourselves apart from God, but there is one whose truth has always been, been the same. Psalm 119, 89 says it this way. It says, your eternal word, O Lord, your word that never changes, stands firm in heaven. In other words, God's truth stands firm. It doesn't change. When our truths change, God doesn't go, wait a minute, maybe, maybe I should change my truth. God sees our change and he goes, man, my heart breaks because their truth is going to lead to something that's going to create more damage in, in their lives and their relationships with other people and their relationship with me. And that's what our truth does when it shifts and changes away from God. A lot of times we like to think that we're really smart and bright, and so we try to come up with something new. And if it's new, then we must have been the first person to ever think this before. Well, you know, the truth of that matter is, is when we come up with something true that is not eternal, well, it's really not true. It will fade, and it will become passe. It will become a philosophical fashion. And if we stumble upon a truth that is truthful, that is eternally true by God, it's not new. It may be new to us, just like we bought a new van, but it's not new to God. It's always been there. So the question then is, is this, where are you going to plant, plant your feet? Because man, there is a lot of different truths out there, aren't there? You know, you watch the news, you watch politicians, you watch your Facebook feed. Man, there is everybody saying this is what is true. This is what is true. This is what is true. This, and it's all different. So the question is, are you going to plant your feet on all the different truths that are being thrown out there by human beings? Or are you going to plant your feet firmly on the truth of God that's always eternal? I can tell you which one is creating the anxiety and stress and you going, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And the one that I believe will give you a lot more uh, strength 
and uh, ability to be able to discern, to give stability in your life. And that is on the eternal word of God. So as you kind of con- go through life, you got to keep asking yourself the question, what is the normal that I want to live my life by? What is a true normal that is truly eternally consistent, that is eternally uh, typical, and that is a standard that will never change? That's what will give you a firm footing. And the other thing about God is that, um, about God that makes God normal, is that his kingdom is normal. And what makes his kingdom normal is that his kingdom is eternal. So his ruling, the way that he rules, the way that he goes about his business, the way that he organizes things is always the same. It doesn't shift. It doesn't change. It's always the same. It's always been the the way, uh, it has always been the same way before eternity uh, past, and it will be the same eternally future. No matter how we try to organize as a group of people, no matter how we go about trying to make and shift and do all sorts of different things in our own little kingdoms, our own little nations here, the only one that will last forever will be God's kingdom. Now, here's the thing, though, about God. God doesn't, his truth, you know, is eternal. His kingdom is eternal, not because God is all powerful and he is hard headed and he just wants to do things his way. God's truth is, is, is truth because it is true, not because he wants it that way. Because it's true, it is good, it is clear, it is wonderful. Same thing with his kingdom. He orders his kingdom, not be, in a way, not because it's self-centered for his own selfish benefit. He orders it in such a way to where it is good, by which when we orient our lives to his kingdom, then we are blessed by that. Because his kingdom is, ru- is run in such a way that is for our benefit. Throughout all human history, you see that God constantly is doing things for our benefit. The fact that Jesus Christ died for you is for you because he loves you. And he rose from the dead so that you can be with him in his eternal kingdom that never shifts and never changes. And so you can have this wonderful experience of a kingdom that is stable and that is wonderful, that's based on his eternal love for you and for me. Psalm 145 says it this way, verse 13, for your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. In other words, it lasts forever. You rule throughout all generations. In other words, God, your rule is going to continue on even after I'm gone. It's going to, your rule is going to continue on in the, in the generation of my children. Your rule is going to continue on in the generation of my grandchildren, and so on and so forth. And your kingdom is just going to go on forever and ever and ever. And so we have the choice. Are we going to plant our feet on the kingdoms of this world that are here today, gone tomorrow? Just a casual observer of human history can see that kingdoms come and go. So are we going to plant our our feet onto that or are we going to plant it onto the kingdom of God? Let me say that a lot of stress and anxiety that you are feeling and having in your life, the fear that you have about the future is a lot of it is because you're planting your feet very firmly on the political situation of the United States and it's going to shift and it's going to change. Or you can find peace in recognizing that God's kingdom is always going to be the same. His rule is always going to be the same. That he will always do what God has always done for the benefit of, of what is true, what is good, and what is, what is right. And so we have the choice of doing those things. One where we can find peace, the other one we will find anxiousness and stress. The Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious in all that he does. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to get back to normal? Maybe in some ways, yeah. I'm, some ways there are things where I want to get back to normal. But I also recognize that there are things about what I deem as being normal may not be the right kind of normal that, that really truly can give me peace and stability and strength in my life. If that's you, if you want to get back to normal, let me encourage you. If you want to get back to normal, then get back to God. Because God is the only normal. That's it. It's very simple. If we want to get back to a normal by which we think in our minds stability and strength and peace, then really what we need to reorient our mind is to a new normal. And our new normal is God himself. Because he's eternal. His truth is eternal. His love is eternal. His kingdom is eternal. 
And that's what makes him uh, the only thing that's really normal. His love is normal. His truth is normal. His kingdom is normal because it lasts forever. And it's good. Isaiah 26 verse 4 says this, trust in the Lord always. Trust is, what trust really means, we trust something really means is I'm putting my, my um, you know, I'm planting my feet firmly on that reality. I'm trusting them. So I'm just going to give that over to them. And, and I'm going to, you know, rest my heart and my mind on them or in that situation. In other words, he's saying, rest your mind always on God. Put your trust in him. Why? Because the Lord God is the only eternal rock. There are no other eternal rocks out there, guys. Money is not eternal rock. Our job situation isn't an eternal rock. Our health is not an eternal rock. Even the relationships that we have with other people, even as good as they are, they're not an eternal rock. There's only one eternal rock. And it's the only one that can give us firmness and strength in our life. And that is our God. So when we think of back to normal, what we need to really understand and what God has been doing all throughout human history is really to bring us back to him. When God created us, he said it was good and it was perfect. It's normal. When, when sin came into this world, we got selfish and we broke normal and we wanted to create a new normal. It was actually cancerous to us and brought the death of anxiety and stress and worry and broken relationships in our lives. That's not the normal of God. And so God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and raise us from the dead. You know why? To bring us back to a better normal, a normal that gives life, that gives peace, that gives strength, that brings about and bridges relationships. And that's a normal that is found resting our hearts and our minds and our lives at the eternal rock, our God. And so as I just kind of finish up our time uh, with you, let me just ask you the question and let me just encourage you to even just process the question. What are you planting your feet on? What are you resting your life on? Are you re resting your life on a hope that maybe somehow, some way we'll go back to a, a normal that wasn't even really the best normal anyways? Are you planting your feet on trying to control all the things around you and you're feeling this sense of anxiety that maybe I can't control things as much as I thought I could, especially with this pandemic and all how it's changed everything up? Maybe there's a better normal out there. Maybe God is calling you back to a normal that's really a back to him of a life of trust on the eternal rock. We're gonna sing a song here in a moment. And as we sing this song, I want you to just either listen to the songs or if God you know, moves you to sing these songs, I want you to, to really think and meditate about what you're singing. Because I believe that in this song that you're going to, to sing, um, God's gonna use it in a way that just moves your heart to a really new normal. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you so much for your grace in my life that even though my, my standard can be so self-centered and, and can hurt other people and because I want things the way that I want them the, when I want them. I also understand how fragile I am when my normal is based on the things of this world that change and shift and all that stress comes from all of that, God. Father, I just come before you and, and ask that you would continue to give me a better vision of a better normal. And I don't just ask that for me, I ask that for everybody who's watching here, that God, you would give them a, a vision, vision of a better normal that gives all of us the desires that we have deep within us, peace and security and love and strength and all of these things that we just would love to have in our lives that keep getting moved and, and wrecked and shifted by all the things of this world, God. Give us a new normal. It's in your son's name I pray, amen.